Hi everyone and thank you so much for watching the third part of my shoutout series in which I recreate makeup looks from other small makeup artists on Instagram. Today I created this golden colored halo eye by G underscore ninja 13 on Instagram. So if you wanted to see how I recreated this look, please keep watching. And of course, please remember to like and subscribe if you want to see everything else I get up to as well. Without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm starting with my face and my lid primer already on so that I can jump right into the eyeshadow. And the look I'm doing today was created by G underscore ninja 13 on Instagram. And the reason why I chose this picture is because number one, I love halo eyes and number two, she did it in a different way. So I really wanted to try it out. Instead of having one light section in the middle and two equally dark sections on the inner and the outer corners of her eyes, she has a dark color on the outer part, a medium color on the inner part, and a light part in the middle, which I've never tried, so I'm curious to do it that way today. I'm going to use my Carly Bible palette, which is well loved, and for the first step, I'm going to pick up a touch of this color right here, and a touch of this orangey brown color, and I'm going to wash it into my crease, dragging it out a bit into that cat eye triangle. Blend, I'm picking up this orangey type of color here and I'm running it right around the edges. Next I'm going to use an eyeliner brush and I'm going to use a color out of my rose gold palette because I don't have the type of brown I'm looking for. It's this warm tone type of brown shade. I'm going to pick it up with an eyeliner brush and I'm going to draw it right into my crease where I want the halo eye to end. And I'm going to build up the color a bit. I saw she had a line there that wasn't blended as much as everything else. I'm not entirely sure if maybe she did it with concealer, but I'm gonna do the shortcut thing where you just draw a line in your crease. I'm then taking a dome shaped brush and very lightly blending the upper edge. This just helps it look a little less choppy, but you don't want it entirely blended out. Now for the actual halo eye. Usually I do the shimmery part last, but today I'm going to do it first and then shape it with the other colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shimmery golden highlighter. I'm going to just pick it up with my finger because then these colors work best. And then to make sure, number one, my eyes don't look wonky. And number two, that the shimmery part is placed in the right area. I'm going to look straight at my mirror. I'm going to hold my finger so that it covers my pupil and then just slightly to the inside so that I can see the edge of my pupil because my eyes finger is going to cover my pupil or my iris actually it's more my iris so I'm just going to move my hand slightly to the side so I can see the edge of my iris and then right there I'm going to put on a swipe of color it's a little bit more to the inside than the middle but if you apply it directly in the middle over your iris your eyes are going to look a little wide so this way you can make sure you have the shimmer in the right area and also when you close your eyes you kind of scrunch them a bit to the inside so if you do that, it kind of balances out better. I'm just going to go back in with a dome shaped brush and drag it around the edges to cut down the top of the highlighter so it doesn't go any higher than I want it to go. That was the original idea with the line so that it keeps the color localized and I don't blend too high and then try to cut it down with the line. So this will just help me shape it out. Of course, you can leave that for the very end as well. Next, with a flat shader brush, I'm going to pick up this medium toned brown shade and I'm going to apply it in the inner corners of my eyes. And make sure you drag the color into your tear ducts as well. Next, I'm going to use the same brush. I'm going to pick up the dark brown in this palette and I'm going to apply it on the outer third of my eyelid and try and shape it so that my eye isn't droopy, like I'm not going to blend it down here, but I'm not going to drag it up too far either because I'm not going to be applying eyeliner. Back with the dome shaped brush, I'm going to pick up the colors I lined in my crease and I'm going to use it to very, very lightly blend the edges of everything I just did. And lastly, with the same flat shader brush, I'm going to pick up this golden highlighter I used at the beginning. 
with a brush you don't get that much color payoff so I'm going to use it to just tap here on the edges to blend the shimmer out into the other colors a little bit otherwise it looks a little too choppy and blocky This side is blended all smoothly and then this side is all patchy for no apparent reason. Now before I can continue with my lower lash line, I need to do my face makeup. So I'm very quickly going to throw on a layer of this LA Girl Pro Liquid Foundation in the color Porcelain. And I'm also going to be using the LA Girl Concealers. Recently when I'm setting underneath my eyes, I want to make sure there are no creases. So I use a beauty blender and my fingers sometimes too. And then without looking down, I squish this concealer brush, which is clean, into the translucent setting powder and pack it on right against my lower lash line. And then once I'm sure that part where the creasing happens is all set and I'm happy, I'll go back in with my normal big brush, pick up the powder, tap it on everywhere else and then what is left I just go all over my face so that I don't get shiny I don't know if I'm the only one that gets it but like if I apply too much setting powder underneath my eyes I swear it gets like a dark shadow and I don't know why and that is the whole reason I started picking up a nude color eyeshadow and applying it underneath my eyes for some extra coverage but I don't understand why it does that? Is it just that the concealer has a lower coverage than I thought it did? And then that comes through with a setting powder? I don't know, but I don't like it. So I need to go try out new concealers. Have you ever heard of glitter herpes? Where you touch glitter once and then you never ever get rid of it? I swatched a glittery type of rose gold eyeshadow the other day and I just found a speck of that on my face. So apparently by just swatching the eyeshadow, I've been infected by it. As usual, I'm gonna comb out my eyebrows before just filling them in with some brown eyeshadow. And I seriously need to go clean up my eyebrows again at some point. But, you know, it's effort. It'll happen when it happens. I actually feel like just waxing my whole face because I know you can wax your eyebrows but I want to wax all the baby hairs off of my face which I know it sounds incredibly painful but I'm sure it will pay off because I would much rather do that and then have super smooth makeup and have all these pretty pictures where everything looks porcelain smooth but I didn't have to shave my face because trust me that is not gonna go well. But it's probably gonna be like one of those things that I talk about doing and then just never do because I'd have to actually go to a place and actually ask them, hey, are you willing to wax my whole face and then actually be willing to pay for it? And, 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 and. So let that one stay in fantasy land. I'm also gonna contour a bit with these shades. I have no idea what show it was, but once I saw this show, a kitty show where they were stuck in a thing where if you did not speak in rhymes, you were gonna freeze until someone could find a way to find a word that rhymes with what you say, right? And like one character got stuck because they said orange and nothing rhymes with orange. And I don't know exactly what the point of that whole thing was, but if I was stuck in a situation where I would die if everything I said did not rhyme, I would end every sentence with a continuous form, even if it's grammatically incorrect, I would just end with trying, singing, doing for no reason, so that everything with an ing rhymes by default. And it doesn't have to be a real word, but most words, or most verbs, you can end with an ing, and it's not that hard to end a sentence with an ing. But luckily I don't live in a world where that is a problem. For blush, I'm feeling this dark color here, and I'm gonna pick up a little bit Tap it on as usual and just blend that out. While I'm here, I'm also quickly gonna contour my nose a bit. The weird thing.
thing about nose contour is even if it's looking funny in person, it still looks great in pictures. So I guess that makes sense that some people would make the sacrifice and then just look a little funny in person, but no. Every picture they're gonna take is gonna be bomb. I'm gonna use the golden highlighter for a change today, so I'm still gonna pick it up on my little lip brush, put it on my cupid's bow, put it on the bridge of my nose, on the tip of my nose, in my tear ducts, and underneath my brows. And now that I'm done with my face makeup, I can use this dome shape brush and do the same thing I did on my lid on my lower lash line. So the glittery color here, the lighter color here, and the darker color there. I'm gonna blend this dark brown up because as you can see it really makes your eyes look droopy so I'm gonna flick the color upwards drag it out like that and then again with a dome shape brush and that light color from earlier very lightly blend it out underneath here not really gonna drag it all the way just here to help lighten up the dark brown a bit and lift it and connect it to the top I'm gonna throw on some of this essence mascara Now since this look doesn't have any eyeliner, I will forever feel my eyes are droopy and to counter that I want to apply a dark color in my waterline but I don't want to apply black because number one there isn't black anywhere else and number two that'll shut my eyes up too much so instead I'm going to be using this brown eyeliner by Essence and applying that in my waterline. This way the brown will still complement the eyeshadow while creating that bit of shadow in my lower lash line that will help lift my eyes a bit. As you can see, it's a subtle difference, but a difference nonetheless. Now for lips, I'm going to use this NYX lip liner in the color Natural. And over that, this NYX liquid lipstick in the color Lace Details, which has quite a wet sound when you open it. Now that I'm dressed, I took one more look at the photo and it looks like she has a black line on the top of her lashes because I'm assuming she has lashes on. However, I don't really want to put mine on because I'm about to go to campus. So instead, to get that same look, because I think it's really going to round it off, I'm just going to take my eyeliner if I can find it. I swear eyeliner runs away. I'm going to take my eyeliner and just draw a thin line just right against my lash line and then I'm going to curl my lashes and apply a little bit more mascara so they pop that bit more. As you can see, it definitely adds a bit more definition to your eye. As you can see, that extra step just adds a bit more definition to your eye. While I was getting dressed, I tried on two different brown sweater tops before this turtleneck. And I'm glad I ended up in this turtleneck, but I checked that they were clean and then moved to put them on. And then I would put it on and then there would be a spot on it. And I'm like, okay, cool, take it off, put on the next one, check that it's clean, and then there's a spot on it. I'm like, what is going on? So it took me two sweaters to realize I have foundation on my fingers and that everything I touch is gonna have a spot on it and then I'm gonna have to wash my hands before I try on the last clean brown sweater I have. Whenever I wear something like a turtleneck or something with a high collar I feel it's just too much to have my hair down so I'd have it back in a ponytail like so or actually today I'm feeling a bit of a bun. It 
it's all dangly and nice and this one has a curl in it that's not all dangly and nice but that's okay it's a messy bun it's a messy hairstyle it's a messy day this is fine and then this is the final result I'm very glad I tried it because it is a halo eye and I love halo eyes but I feel it's less dramatic than the typical type so this is a way to soften up your glam a bit if you want to wear it out for a daytime type of thing like I'm gonna do right now thank you so much G underscore ninja 13 that I could recreate this look of yours I had fun doing it and I tried a few new things that I'm glad I did and I can't wait to see your recreation of my look thank you so much for watching if you like the idea of this series, feel free to leave a like so that I can see you guys are interested in this type of thing. And feel free to leave a comment on what you think of this look, what you think of this series, and wish you'd like to participate in this if you'd like me to recreate any of your looks or if you have recreated any of anyone else's looks up to date. And, you know, the subscribe button is there if you want to see what other things I get up to as well. Anyways, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and until next time. Bye! If you ever see me looking at the camera like <gasps> it's because I want to make sure I'm still filming and I didn't press pause and forget to start recording again. Which happens more often than you'd think.